There's some rule that cinema bros talk about where it's like they like take the screen and they like chop it into like nine very much like the Brady Bunch and you're supposed to be like centered but the top of your head like I just don't ever know where to put myself but I'm not looking for feedback on that I'm never looking for feedback on that by the mug a couple videos ago I went through my whole makeup collection and I pointed out the things that I haven't used yet this year so I thought what could be an interesting activity is to go through and use a lot of the makeup that I haven't used this year. So if you haven't watched that video, I will link it in the cards. I think it's on this side. I always get that wrong. I'll talk about why I haven't used it or like why I don't think about it. That's going to be like what we do. But I also thought subcategory. Another thing that could be fun is to be inspired by the way I used to do my makeup. So I'm not going to do like the same shapes and stuff that I used to do with my makeup because I used to do like a really big eye shape. I'm not going to do that, but I am going to use some of those like more earthy colors that I used to really enjoy so that's what we're going to be using today. I am a little bit lower energy today because I went to see Chapel Rowan last night in Pittsburgh. I had a really fun time until I didn't. As I was leaving the concert I see my ex who I am not very fond of. For a primer today I'm going to be using the Sisley Blur Expert in the shade Zero. I haven't really used this year because it's not something that like lives in my mind rent free. It's not something that I'm always thinking of. So I really love blur. It's a through line of my channel. I've done videos about blurring specifically. This was in one of my battles of the blur. I just really like it and my skin can take blur. I am not always looking for like coverage as much as I'm looking for my skin to look a little bit filtered. A lot of my friends really like this powder and they prefer it over the Chantecaille Perfect Blur powder. I really love this <laughs> and I use it a lot. In my battle of the blur video where I put those two to the test, this only really works for me as a primer. As a setting powder or a finishing powder, it doesn't have the same effect as the Chantecaille. And there are other things that I could do in the priming step to blur that I feel like this is only marginally better than those at blurring. It's not that I don't like it. There's a couple of things going against it that I've learned even since then. What, look, one, it's like $110 for this powder. This powder is $80. And I'm speaking of like when I bought them, maybe with inflation, these things cost more now. I'm not opposed to spending a lot for a powder. I've been working on this powder for like three years, so it takes me a long time to get through one. An expensive powder isn't something that I feel bad about buying because it's not something that I use a ton of. The thing that really bugs me about this for it being $110 is that Sigma, a very affordable brand, uses the same packaging and you might be thinking to yourself why does that bother you so much is that this clearly this is not a custom component and a lot of times in luxury you're kind of paying for the experience which means like if you were to go to a retailer you would receive like a luxury experience the packaging should feel like luxury and this just doesn't do it for me i feel some kind of way about it but anyway we'll use it to I, yeah, I don't dislike it if you're using it as a primer the best way to do it is to take like a flat brush and just kind of press it into the skin to get the best results. And the most interesting thing about this, I think, is that when you use it as a primer, it doesn't really, you know, affect the stuff you put on top of it. Because a lot of the time, if you put powder down before you put like liquids and creams down, normally that's like a recipe for disaster. But this product doesn't, it's not a problem. It does mattify a little bit, but I said this whenever I first tried this, you can still see like the glow from my skincare coming through it. So I feel like if you have dry skin, that powder will be okay for you. And I feel like my, my friends who have dry skin, who use it as a finishing powder too, also enjoy it more as a finishing powder, but it doesn't, it really didn't do anything for me as a finishing powder. The next thing I'm going to use is I think it's just like a category of product that I don't find a high use value in. Now I watch a lot of Hannah Louise post in, and there was a time there where she was testing a bunch of green color correctors and I bought this Chanel corrector in Ver, which is just green, it's a green color corrector. I like what it does. It always feels very makeup-y whenever I use it. Unlike Hannah, who kind of uses this to neutralize her skin and then does some like spot concealing from there, I do like all over coverage and but I like to do lighter coverage with my all over coverage as well. So whenever I like take a step to like green color correct it just feels like I'm doing so much we it's only one additional step but to me it really takes the piss out of me whenever I'm doing makeup to put on a green color corrector what I will say is there is a little bit of coverage from that powder and I have gotten the redness that is I really bought this for under control with skincare now that's a whole different thing and it's not like I think what I did will clear up other people's redness I was using to too harsh of an active and it was really irritating my skin so 
I switched to actives my skin likes that one much more so I don't really have a lot of redness up here so most of the time I'm using it along my neckline which I used to get really bad razor burn but I have gotten that under control too so this also is something that doesn't have like a high use value. now every now and then like my skin is prone to redness I have like light neutral pink leaning skin so redness is just like something that's gonna happen to my skin like it's just like if I touch it the wrong way and then my skin's not super sensitive but like redness I'm prone to redness like sometimes so it's not like I won't ever use this but like honestly today I don't even know that I have some like I have a little bit of like a little bit on this cheek like really not that much is a little bit right there so I'll use it but that's why it doesn't get a lot of use in my collection the follow-up thought to that <laughs> for me is should I declutter it but the other thing is I feel like I've used a lot of it <laughs> it's not the most beautiful packaging in fact I've complained about this packaging before it's kind of goopy and gross in there so it's like I don't want to pass that on to someone but also it's like two years old at this point maybe like it might be that old like it might be a couple of years old at this point it doesn't smell weird or anything like that it still works fine so I'm comfortable using it but it's like you know what I mean it's like I just don't feel a point in decluttering it but I think once it gets out of my collection either if it expires or I just really decide that it's not something that I want to keep in my makeup collection I will probably just never buy a green color corrector yet if one comes my way in PR or something I'll give it a whirl but it's not something that I'll feel lost without because I very rarely use it and I have it okay the next thing I'm going to use is the Glossier skin tint and this isn't really because I don't like this product I have five foundations four foundations five foundations I think I have five now I think I have five right now I try really hard to keep it not too many because I like foundation and <laughs> I like what I like right and so I was just like why would I keep bringing things in and having them and the glossy skin tint was actually gifted to me by my friend Cam who is also Clove Room here on YouTube they sent it to me for my birthday which is very very nice I have the shade G11 so I mostly use this for like daytime I work from home and I don't really see anyone so oftentimes I'm dressed like a bum and I'm not really doing makeup unless I'm like testing it so this would be like I'm going out on a Saturday during the day we're running to the mall we're running errands we're doing something and like I just want a little bit of something this is what I will typically use I just haven't had many of those days this year. You may recall that I'm trying to see people more this year, and I am, and I've been very successful at it. However, a lot of what that has been has been like nighttime, um, not so much daytime things. It hasn't really sung to me as something that I've used. I've also worn this out at night. I think it's really lovely. It's just not something that I've used too much this year. So I'm going to put that on my face. I'm going to use a brush because I'm feeling really lazy today, and we're just all going to accept that I'm really lazy today. I don't suggest if you buy this product to use a brush but if you do a brush that's really really like fluffy tends to be the best way to apply skin tints in my personal opinion like I said my skin's pretty good right now so this glossy skin tint is really just a little bit more blur not so much coverage when it comes to what I'm utilizing it for also keep in mind it is a skin tint I'm like putting it on I'm like is it even doing anything but there's always already some coverage from the blur expert from Sisley. I like the way this looks. I think it looks good. If I keep my foundations collection small, I keep my concealer collection even smaller. So I only have three concealers. Two of them are the same formula and they're just different shades. And then this one is also from the same brand. It's the Surat Surreal Skin Concealer. If you watched my Surat review, I don't recommend this product. Why? Because this is $50 or it was $50 at the time where I reviewed it and I looked up the price. And this is how much product you get. <laughs> like it's not a lot of product. And yeah, I just don't think it's worth it. I do think it's a beautiful product but also the packaging isn't super luxe either like there's not a lot that this is providing but it is a beautiful concealer and it's something that goes really well with the Glossier skin tint because the Glossier skin tint doesn't have a ton of coverage this doesn't have a ton of coverage this just really is like a little bit of spot concealing and it also works pretty beautifully under the eye as long as I'm not dragging the product under my eye just kind of patting it in really is the way to go. And I have used this this year. This isn't something I've completely neglected. I've been testing, it's not on my desk anymore because I've actually cleaned my vanity before doing this video, which is pretty rare for me, but I've been testing the skin tint from Lisa Eldridge and it pairs really well with that. And so when I've been wearing that, I've also been wearing this concealer. So far, we've used four products and I feel like my complexion looks really good. I also feel like because everything I used was lighter coverage, could st I could stop here and go out uh, on my day and be like, I w it wouldn't look like I'm too makeup-y, 
but it would just look like my skin's really nice. These products are really speaking for themselves. Let's continue because I'm not done. I have more makeup to put on. Don't you worry. For contour, I'm going to use the Victoria Beckham Contour Stilo in the shade Travertine, which is the lightest shade from them. This is another product that I have used this year. It's just the contour that I don't use as much as the other one. So my favorite contour is the Inner Glow Cream Pigment in Intuition from Ritual Defeat. But when I do warmer looks, I do like to contour with this because this is definitely more of a contour. It reads much warmer on my skin than I feel like it does on some other people. It's still a very, very lovely product and I still like it. I think I will always just like have it on hand, but it's not like something that I'm feeling like I want to declutter. I feel like it blends really well. It does, you know, a very gentle, easy contour. It's not something designed for like intense contouring. It just really gets the job done. Not a product that was really at risk of like being decluttered in my July declutter, but oh, it's good just to touch base with things and remind yourself why you might have liked them. So we will come back to bronzer. We're going to put blush on and highlight first because I'm using creams and liquids. For blush today, I I thought about using the, I thought about using the bronzer, the orange bronzer, which I can't remember the name of right now. It's gone. I don't have it. <laughs> so it's left my brain. But I thought what would be better and more appropriate for this video is this from Surat. This is the Surat Artistique Liquid Blush in the shade Cantaloupe. It's a messy little thing, this product. And the reason I picked this is because I really like this and I just haven't used it this year at all where I have used the bronzer a couple of times. And this product is really, really nice. It's like a nice, beautiful, like watercolory flush. It's not a blush with like a ton of presence, which I really like, but I feel like in the, the start of this year, I've been wearing blushes more that have had a little bit more of a presence. And I, I guess just like, I didn't realize that subconsciously that I was favoring that, like something a little more pigmented, which I don't always like. But like, look at that. Nice and glossy and glowy. And I feel like, not that I've been going full matte this year, I feel like I have been enjoying something a little more like demi matte, at least when it comes to complexion. So maybe that's another reason I haven't used it. Like powder blush is going to be much more mattifying, unless it has like sparkle in it. That doesn't even really make you look dewy. It just makes you look a little bit sheeny. But this is like a glow, 100% a glow. But it's really beautiful. I really like it. I really like it. I remember the first time I put this on, I was like, is anything happening? And then I was like, oh no, that's just gorgeous. It's just stunning. And then for highlighter today, I'm going to be using the shade Phosphine from Ritual Defeat. I just don't think I've gotten into these yet this year. I feel like I wear these a little bit more in the warmer weather, which obviously this year so far, it's been winter so far. Like just like the contour. They're not saying that was like in danger of like, like I was like thinking about getting rid of or like felt that way about it, but oh, it's so shiny. I will say, I mean, it's much less intense whenever I use a brush to apply it. That's been helpful because Ritual Defeat highlighters, most of them, they have such a shift to them and that, that has such a presence. Like I feel like I've put this on before and it's been very pink or very orange because it kind of like is like champagne -y shifts to pink. Um, but I feel like when I apply it with a brush, you get that highlighter effect, but not so much like the intense shift. Like it's there a little bit, it's much softer. And this is much more my speed. So I am gonna powder my face. I'm using my regular powders. They're not, I don't have a ton of powders. So I just wanna use them up. And literally, I'm just gonna show you this because I'm just, I'm so close to finishing this powder. I can't even get it open. I have no nails. I wore nails <laughs> to the concert last night and I popped them off this morning, but like there's so little left. It's gonna be like any day when I, finish. Like, I'm, I was so excited to finish it. Look at that. There's even more pan after that use. I think I only have like a handful more of uses of that, which is so great. And you're, if you're one of those people who's like, why are you celebrating that? It's just like, I liked it enough to use it up. And a powder is something that I very rarely use up, even though I have oily skin. I'm just not concerned about powdering. It's just not on my to-do list. I've used this bronzer a couple times off camera, but I haven't used it on camera yet this year, so I thought it would be the appropriate time. But I have the bronzer from Surat in the shade Soleil Dew. This is the low-hanging fruit of my bronzers. Not because 
I actually dislike it. And it's not because I don't think it's good. But my bronzer collection, I feel like, is a little bit out of control. I have four bronzers, <clears throat> four or five. It just feels like too many. They all do with something a little bit different. They have a little bit of under different undertones. Some are more pigmented, some are less pigmented. So they they all serve like different purposes. And I don't need to really harp on myself to like bring myself down. But for some reason, my brain really is trying to kick this out of my <laughs> collection. It's like, you don't like that that much. It's not your favorite thing. It's, you, you can get rid of it. Which is like probably in the grand scheme of things true. Like I probably could get rid of it and I wouldn't miss it that much. I was recently trying some stuff from Sigma and their bronzer is the thing that I think impressed me the most. It's just the pigmentation of it, the way it blends. And I was like, oh, this could, I could really easily see this in my makeup collection over the Surratt bronzer. So then one day I was just like messing around with makeup. I put the Sigma on one cheek and I put this one on the other cheek. And this one just was much better. And I don't think anyone needs to run out and buy this. I think the Sigma bronzer is beautiful and it has a better shade range and it has a better price than this but like this is really really beautiful the, but I think also the other reason I'm trying to subconsciously like boot this out of my collection is because Surratt only released two bronzer shades which is like garbage we're in the year 2024 I just can't believe that they did that that negative feeling about it is another reason why I'm like always trying to boot it it works for me it's beautiful on me it's like, why can't I just enjoy it? That's kind of the vibe. It just melts into the skin, really. It's so beautiful. Surratt's powder products, all of them, some of the most seamless products I've ever used. The thing is, like, there are some things that I've gotten in PR that I wouldn't have bought that I continue to enjoy, but I wouldn't recommend you buy. Case in point, this concealer, great, love it. Oh, I probably wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't I even recommend you to buy it. But it's like, you know, it's one of those things where it's just like, you know, I get PR and it's like, if I like it enough to keep it, why not? You know, and that's kind of the vibe. I feel like that's also the vibe with this bronzer. I think we're looking gorge. We're doing a, a good new interpretation of like the colors that I used to really like to wear. For eyeshadow today, because that's where we're headed next, I pulled out two palettes because I want to use some shades from both. I pulled out the Natasha Denona Gold palette and I pulled out the Natasha Denona Yucca palette. I think most of it's going to come from the Yucca palette. This palette very much sings to like the old version of me. That's the version of me who bought this. And then literally right after I bought it, I was like, getting into different colors. I guess I never really considered about these mucky tones feeling a little bit warmer, you know, earthy tones, but these are definitely a little bit warmer. But I had been starting to favor like cool toned things around the time that I bought this. And I guess I didn't know that I was going to go full force into cool tones again. So, you know, I just I haven't worn a lot of tones like this, even in like browns, like warm browns. It's not something I'm reaching for quite a lot. So that, I think that's the reason why I haven't really used this, but I've also really enjoyed using this every time I have used it. I'm gonna get some greens, I'm gonna get some oranges on the eye. I'm gonna prime my eyes the way I usually would and then we'll start. I also, while I'm doing the eyeshadow look, I guess I can tell you a little bit about the concert. As we were at the concert, I feel like I realized I like knew a little bit less of the Chapel Rowan album than I thought I did. I know like all of the singles and I know a couple of, and I don't wanna call them deep cuts, but I know a couple of the songs that are further into the album that aren't really singles. But it was really fun. She's a really talented singer live. I wasn't really sure what she was going to sound like live. And I, I have like, you know, I've watched the tiny desk. So like, it's like, I know she can sing, but like hearing it in like a concert, it's going to be a little bit different than the tiny desk, right? But she can really sing. Also, I want to say she performed the new single, which came out on Friday, the day of the concert. And we were the first people she performed it for, which was pretty cool. That was the first time she performed it live. And it feels, you know, feels a little special to have heard the song live for the first time. As a group, as a unit, this isn't like heavy criticism, but it's just, and it's not even really a criticism of her. I think it's just something that happened that no one could have controlled on our team. So she started this tour, I swear to God, like forever ago. And I mean, and she really has been on this tour for a while. She's been performing these songs for a while. She's, I feel like she like did so much live music even before she was like, opening for Olivia Rodrigo and such. I know friends who have like gone to her shows like two years ago, like people who like live in, like people, I just know that people have been like going to her live shows for a while and she must have been performing these songs for a while. And I'm not saying she, it wasn't like she was phoned in or anything. She aren't like, I feel like she did the longest leg of the tour right, but like right before the holidays last year. And then this year she's been mostly opening for Olivia Rodrigo. And then she's like extended the tour from last year into this year with more cities, which I'm grateful for obviously because she like, did in fact come here. <laughs> she came to my city. I'm thinking now if if she, if she could do the staging differently, I think I bet she would. And what I mean by that is just like there were some lighting effects, you know, to the the songs. She probably has like the capital or her team, like she's probably earned enough money to like do something different with the staging, but also it's just like why would you change how the tour goes if you've been doing it this way for so long? Like it's one of those things where I just like 
I feel like it could have been more, but I think I wouldn't have had that expectation if I saw her last year, but like now she's so big. Like the, sh the show is sold out and I feel like in Pittsburgh, we very rarely like sell things out like that. Very rarely. But also, when the girlies come to Pittsburgh, when the girls for the gays really come to Pittsburgh, we really do sell it out. Like, Marina always sells out when she plays here. Charlie sold out whenever she played here last. West Virginia and Ohio, like, they're pretty close to, like, if you live on the eastern side of those or in like, the northern part of West Virginia, a lot of those people will also come here for concerts and such. There were, like, a lot of people around us from West Virginia last night at the show. She's clearly, like, a pretty big star because, like, she obviously didn't come here the first round because I don't know what analytics they use to decide where they go on tour. And I also know that we often get skipped for tours because I don't know if it's like a tax in Allegheny County or if it's like a Pennsylvania tax, but there's some kind of tax about like live events going past a certain point and they're taxed pretty high. It's like there's something that happens that like deters people. So we only really get like the really, really famous people that come through. So like she came, you know what I mean? Like that's, I'm just saying like, it's a pretty big deal that she came here. It's a pretty big deal that she sold out. It's just like everything could have been a little bit more thought out at this point. So what we saw could have easily been performed like at a much smaller club if that makes sense. So I would like to see in her next door. It's not really a heavy criticism, but it's just like a thought I had. Like, I was watching, I was like, there's not much to this. It's pretty bare bones, which is cool in its own way, but also it's just like, I just know. Because Chapel Round gives off like big pop star vibes, for sure. Like, I think that like, as she continues to get m more of her flowers, that we're gonna see like an intense evolution of like what her live performance will be like but it was still very very fun i think the real kicker <laughs> just gonna share this with you about like running into my ex after i didn't run into him well i saw him i had to i did duck <laughs> i like didn't know what to <laughs> we were like it, like everyone was leaving like the show was over everyone's like it's like that mass exodus and we were kind of close to the front but like we were also closer to an easier way to get out so we like you know, did the fast thing to go around everyone. And as we were like waiting at the top of the this set of steps, I saw him and I was like, I just ducked. <laughs> I was like, I, was like, oh. <laughs> and I grabbed Tiff's shoulders. I do need to tell you that Tiff has long threatened that it has it's gonna be on site the next time that they see this man. Their blood started boiling. Now, I, at this point, well, one, I do really want to see Tiff kind of, I didn't want to see Tiff fight him. I mean, that's not kind, but it's how I feel. And like, I'm not going to get into the what happened in our relationship, but so I, I'm telling all you this, I need to tell you why it was more upsetting to see him. So part of the healing of dating this man has, like, I, I've connected with Chapel's lyrics, specifically the songs, and she has a lot of songs about essentially like unrequited love or people who you're definitely like dating or in relationships with and them not valuing you as the way that you see them. I guess you can guess how the relationship was whenever I was in it. And so she has a song called Coffee and this co the song Coffee is about like wanting to reconnect with someone, but not like romantically. It's like, we can do this, we can do this, but like also knowing that that's impossible. And so like when she was playing that song, I got pretty emotional because like the song's been emotional. It's something that I've been use using for catharsis for, I don't know, since the album came out. For that moment to have also been shared with him feels really yucky to me. And <laughs> I need you all to know that I'm cognitively aware that he can, this man can do whatever he wants. He's obviously fully welcome to come to this concert. It's like a personal thing, right? And, and I know he didn't really do that to ruin my night, but it just like did. Tiff really was like, I'm gonna fight him. I was like, I just wanna go home. You know, I just wanna go home. And I'm also just like, I, my body really went into fight or flight when we, like I saw him and I started, I, I started shaking. I was like, oh my God. Like as it was happening, I was like, it's one of those things where, you know how something's like both traumatic and kind of funny in the real time? That's where my brain was. I was like, kind of like, God, I can't believe I'm, I can't believe I'm like shaking, quaking, quaking in my boots. Then when we got outside, they were going the same direction as us. And like, they were a little bit in front of us. And I was like, Tiff, I do not want to, I don't want to pass him because <laughs> he did try to apologize to me once, but I didn't accept it. And in the, not in like, because I'm like bitter. I mean, I am bitter, but not that wasn't the real reason why it, it was the way I was apologized to and the vagueness of the apology it was like I'm really like he apologized via TikTok DMs and he said I'm really sorry for everything I did to you but like what do you mean what do you mean by that what do you what are you sorry for because I'm I'm not sure that what you're saying you're sorry for is like what I'm feeling 
Do you know what I mean? Like, that's that was the problem. It was just like I don't know what you're apologizing for. Like, yes, I do think you should apologize to me, but I don't think you know what you're apologizing to me for. Then Tiff, the only course of action they chose to take was to pretend to throw up really loud right behind them, and I ran away. <laughs> <laughs> a 33-year-old in a mini skirt and a fringe jacket and a rhinestone mesh top ran away. I said, I got I'm not part of this. And I don't think Tiff really paid attention either because I was like, did they turn around whenever you did that? There was another reason I didn't want to like con like have a conflict with him. He was very clear there with his new partner. I don't have anything against that person. Like you're allowed to date him. Uh, and I like don't want to, you know what I mean? Like, it's that person's night too. I'm it's, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I just couldn't, it's like, I'm not doing all this tonight. Also, I'm tired. Also, the boots that I wore were cutting off the circulation of my toes. I was hungry. I didn't eat dinner. <laughs> like, so it was just like, I was just like, this is not the time for this. I had been saying for a long time that I was like, I'm going to run into him somewhere. Every time I go out, I'm like, I'll run into, I'm going to run into him today. And I said it before we went to the concert. And I, I've kind of used that as like my, like, if I say it, it won't happen. Well, finally, he did. <laughs> finally did. And I do feel like this is the start. There's a couple of things I'm going to where I know that he would be interested in those things. I think I'm going to run into him there. And those are going to be, you know, quieter events. Not like, so I have a feeling that like, there could be an approach made. I probably won't approach him, but I don't, but if he approaches me, I will tell him off. But I'm gonna try to mind my business. Okay, anyway, I just did a look with the gold palette and the yucca palette. Yeah, I mean, I still really like, I do like these tones. I really do. Like, they're really pretty. I really like green, this kind of green. But like, I think the look is really beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna do some quick eyeliner and mascara and then we'll do the lips together. For the lips today, a royal scandal from, from Gucci. Like, I mean, it's a very clearly loved <laughs> lipstick. I just haven't worn it in so long because I feel like I've, it's, it has like this, it has this like muckiness to it that pairs well with this kind of color, but like not so much what I've been wearing recently. So I'm just going to put it on. Man, I really love this color of lipstick. <laughs> It's like, it has a little bit of green in it. it goes, ugh. You know, I still like this kind of look. I still really do. Okay. Well, okay. So in reflection, now that I've used everything, all these things I haven't really touched this year, what I will say is none of them disappointed. And I think we might see more of these kind of grungy looks from me. Like, I feel really inspired to do more of this because I just, I, I love it so much. I love this, I love this kind of like mucky, yucky kind of color. I guess I just I forgot about it. You know, sometimes like you just won't use a like, certain thing for a while and you might be like, oh, maybe I just don't like that. And then you like use it again and you're like, oh man, that's not that I don't like it. I just haven't used it in a while and it kind of left my brain and I thought I liked it less than I actually do because I just haven't used it. So if you have a larger makeup collection, you have some things you haven't touched in a while, I implore you to try this little activity because I found it pretty enlightening. That wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. If, if you are new to my channel and you are not subscribed, I would love to have you subscribe. My channel does is a lot of like reflecting on my makeup collection, a lot of being discerning about buying things. I want to help myself and help you build a habit of just being more discerning about the makeup that we're choosing to buy. So if you're into that kind of thing, I would love to have you subscribe. But we also do makeup reviews and like new makeup sometimes, but the real focus is this kind of thing. I am on Patreon and I have channel members. It's the same. doesn't matter which one you join. You're going to get the same benefits no matter which one you join. Um, I do additional content over there if you want to check it out. There's no pressure to join my Patreon or be a channel member. It's just there if you'd like to do it. Thank you to all my current members and patrons. I really, really appreciate you. Oh, also, oh, one more thing. Favor. <laughs> I'll link this in the pinned comments down below. I was nominated for Best of the Berg this year and you can vote daily. So if you want to take the time to vote daily, uh, you can do that. I do daily reminders on my Instagram stories. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's just at home You don't have to follow me on Instagram. You don't really have to vote for me. I'd appreciate it if you did. It's just, you know, you can, you don't have to. It's kind of the vibe. Um, so I just wanted to ask that. I probably will mention it in the next coming videos. I keep forgetting to mention it, so I'm glad I remembered. Um, but okay, that ends the video for real this time. Remember to follow your hope and you'll find me. I'll see you in a video soon. Go forth. Tits out. Bye-bye.